Let's give me some rich kids. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, we're going to open to two places. Third John, chapter 1. We know that. That's our foundation, right? Yes. And then also open to Genesis 26. Genesis 26. So third John and then Genesis 26 in that order. In that order. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. You get it? Say amen. Amen. All right, let's read 3 John. It's only one chapter. We're going to read verse uh, 2. Well, let's, let's go and read verse 1 and 2. How about that? All right, let's read together. Ready to read. The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. I pray that you prosper in how many things? So that means in every way and be in health. I don't want you to prosper and be sick. I want you to prosper and be in health. That means, in other words, he said, I want you to be whole in every area of your life. Hallelujah. That's what we believe God for. No sickness, no disease, no infirmities. You know, when my, my wife and I and our, our kids, when we pray over our meals, we pray and we, we thank God that uh, we, we rebuke and we refuse. We reject all sickness and disease. We receive divine health, divine life that Jesus Christ already bought and paid for. Amen. That's our right. When we pray, you know, he said, I will bless your bread and your water and I'll take sickness away from you. So when you pray over your food, call that up. Amen. That good bread, good meat, good Lord, let's eat stuff. I ain't can't play with that. Call in your divine health. It's your right. Healing is a children's bread. Remind your body of that every time. Glory to God. And you can walk in that. I guarantee you walk in it. I guarantee you walk in it. So prosper and being healthy even as your, your soul prospers. All right? Now, let's then look over here at Genesis 26. You know, progress, uh, prosperity is progressive, right? Yeah. That's what we've been teaching on here. And your prosperity is, runs parallel with your mindset. Yes. Yes. Right? So we're talking about developing that prosperity mindset. Hallelujah. All right, Genesis 26, we're going to read three verses, verses 12 through 14. You all know it, but let's put our eyes on it. Vocalize it. Visualize it. Hallelujah. And invite it to become part of our life. Got it? All right. Genesis 26, verse 12 through 14. Let's read together. Ready? Read. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds. And a great number of servants, so the Philistines. Glory to God. He sowed. He reaped. You know, that's God's system. I was driving on the street the other day, my wife and I, I guess the kids too. And this, this phrase came to me. My people are living on owing and weeping. Remember that came out? Yeah. My people are living on owing and, and weeping, not sowing and reaping. Wow. Wow. Like that, that sounds like a Leroy Thompson rhyme. He liked the rhyme when he preached. <laughs> but it's, instead of sowing and reaping, God's people are owing and weeping. That's not God's system. The blessing makes rich and doesn't add any sorrow. There's no weeping to it. So we've wept long enough. And we've owed long enough. Yes. Yes. Now we're going to operate fully in sowing and reaping. Amen. And then what happened is, said, said here, the Lord blessed him, right? Mm -hmm. yes, Look at this. He began to prosper. Mm -hmm. He continued prospering mm -hmm. until he became very prosperous. Yes. Yeah. Notice the progression here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what I like, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For he had. Yes, yeah. See, I like this. This, this, this is what, what helps all the naysayers. Yeah who's so smart that they want to tell you prosperity ain't about what you have. 
Well, you got to explain it to God because the Bible says here that he prospered. Yes, and it said the Lord blessed him. Well, the Lord blessed you with a good night's sleep. No, that ain't, it ain't say the Lord blessed with a good night's sleep. It said he blessed him. Mm-hmm. And when he blessed him, he began to prosper. Right. And he continued prospering right. until he became very prosperous yes, for he had. Yeah, he had. In other words, here's the evidence of his prosperity. Yes, here's the evidence yes, of the blessing. Yes, he had something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> So don't let no, no fool try to fool you. Come on. For he had possessions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What you possess. See, people don't like to hear this. But what you possess is an indication of the hand and the blessing of God on your life. That's right. That's right. Well, God handed it on me because I don't have anything. No, 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 no. I'm not saying if you don't have anything yet, God's hand's not on you. But if his hand gets on you and you keep, make sure his hand stays on you, eventually. Yes, sir. You're going to begin to prosper, continue, and become, and there's going to be something evident on the outside because it said he had possessions, and then it said again, he had possessions, and then it said a great number of servants, so much that, I, I have to add in there, so much that the Philistines envied him. Enviable prosperity. People don't envy your Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost is a tour guide that will get you to enviable prosperity. Yes. Yes. We're not going to discount the Holy Ghost any longer, are we? Yes. Tonight we're going to talk about progressive manifestation. Amen. Progressive manifestation. Lord, thank you tonight for the word. We receive it with thanksgiving. We are ready, Lord. Speak. Utter. Utter. Utter your voice from heaven. It's your voice that shakes the mountains. It's your voice that causes the, the hinds and the cows to, to skip and the, the mountains to split. God, it's your voice that has power tonight, Lord. Silence my voice. Let your voice ring through me tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Progressive manifestation. We began several weeks ago on this topic, uh, again, developing a prosperity mindset. But we began with progressive revelation. Y'all remember that? Yes, sir. Progressive revelation. And we showed you how, you know, even Paul said, said, I went up by revelation. Yes, so you go up. How many of y'all want to come up? Yes, sir. All right. So we go up by revelation. Yes, sir. By revelation. So the primary thing we need when we're talking about moving into prosperity moving from one level to another level, from one dimension to another dimension, from one tax bracket to another tax bracket, from one condition physically to another condition physically. I'm talking about even our health or in our marriages, whatever it is, from one place to another, we need revelation. Remember in the scripture said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, the Bible says, eyes have not seen. Come on now, help me out. Ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for him. So there are things, help me out, there are things, say things, there are things God has prepared for you. And and trust me, they're good things. God doesn't prepare bad things. You ever ever talk to somebody and they were were eating something, they say, man, this is nasty, taste this. (laughs) Or they smell something, say, this smells terrible, man, smell this. God doesn't do this. God, if, if something's not good to God, he doesn't pass it on to you. He only prepares and sets up good things for us. Right? But the Bible goes on to say, verse 10, 1 Corinthians 2, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the revealer of the things God has prepared for us. We were talking about this this morning in prayer, boy. I wish y'all were here in prayer this morning because the Holy Ghost just began just to kind of shake, shake our tree and knock down our sacred cows this morning in prayer and talk to us about the importance of the Holy Spirit. And I, I may deal with this a little later on, but just, just to brief you on it, uh, we've been talking about in Galatians 3, 14, the blessing of Abraham coming on us. Then it, but it talks about the promise that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And so we, 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 some, we so often focus on the blessing of Abraham, but don't focus a lot on the promise of the Spirit. Right, right. And what he was saying to me uh, this morning was that the Spirit is the one that leads us into the fullness of the blessing. Right. Yeah. And if you and I don't lean heavy on the Holy Ghost, how many of y'all are here saved and full of the Holy Ghost? How many of y'all baptized in the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues? 
All right? If you're not, you can get that way easily. You can get that way tonight. It doesn't take long. It's just a yielding to it. But the Holy Spirit is the one, and he said this to me. I was on my, on my drive here. I was passing uh, just about to hit about Lake Megory or so, and the Holy Spirit said, uh, I'm the tour guide. He's our tour guide. That's what that's just the Carolyn's jumping in on. He's our tour guide. And I, I told her this morning, if we all got on got our private plane, you know that jet we all own the church, and we took a trip over to Italy, we're going to go shopping, we're going to go eat, we're going to go sightsee through Italy, because none of us are Italian. None of us have lived there. None of, none of us don't know the terrain. We have to first make sure we arrange that when we get there, there's a tour guide. There's got, and the tour guide has to, number one, know the language. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. Number two, know the culture. Yes. No, number three, know the laws. Yes. This is not in necessarily order, but language, the, the laws, the culture, yes. and he has to know his way around. I mean, he wouldn't be a tour guide if he didn't know, know his way around. So the Holy Ghost is our tour guide. In the kingdom, yes, in the blessing, yes, into prosperity. Yes, he knows the language. Yes, yes. That's why we pray in tongues. He makes intercession for us. He knows the language of heaven. He knows the laws of the kingdom. He knows the laws of prosperity. You understand this? He knows the culture of the kingdom. He understands honor. He understands protocol. Come on now. He understands you can't just go to a king all willy-nilly. He understands you have to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts. He understands that. He's a tour guide. And, and he knows where everything is. He knows his way around. So he, we've got to lean heavy on the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's how we get this revelation. Now we meditate on the word of God, right? But you don't just think about it in the natural mind. When you meditate the word of God, you're saying, Holy Spirit, show me something. Show me something between, show me something between the lines. Show me the voice behind the voice. Show me the word behind the word. Show me what I can't see, what I can't understand with my natural mind. Because you can't understand the kingdom with your natural mind. Y'all don't care if you got a PhD in, in, in English literature. You can't understand the kingdom with your natural mind. You can't even understand the Bible with your natural mind. That's right. That's right. That's right. You understand? Yes, this, 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 is, this is a constitution of the kingdom. Amen. Written by the Holy Ghost. So he's the revealer. All right? So progressive revelation. And here's the thing about, about the Holy Ghost. Remember Jesus was saying this to the disciples one time? He said, there's a lot more I want to say to you, but you can't handle it right now. He says, but when the Holy Ghost comes, y'all are not, okay. He said, there's a lot more I want to say to you, but you can't handle it. See, God knows how much you can handle at every turn. So he doesn't tell you everything. If God had told us 15 years ago what he's telling us now, we probably would have, would have, would have rejected it. It would have been all yellow blocks to us. <laughs> but he's been building gradually, slowly. Piece by piece, adding revelation to revelation, right. allowing us to grow. So the revelation has been progressive to the point now where we're understanding, boy, it's a, it, we're, we're, we're ready now to receive what God is, what he wants to do for us. To receive the things he has prepared for us. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So then we went from progressive revelation, and we spent the last three uh, messages on progressive transformation. Right? Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And we talked about this last, the last two Wednesday nights about from Hebrews 5.14 that talks about our senses being exercised or being trained to discern good and evil. Solid food. We're on solid food now, right? Now, if you're still over here, I assume you have teeth to handle solid food. If not, we have a class next door. Now, I'm not, I'm not, this is not to pick on the people over there because there's, there's some solid food people over there, but they're following protocol. You understand? So they're going through the class because they, they know they need to go through that. But over here, we're, we're solid meat on Wednesday nights. Right? And so it belongs to those who are of full age, 
That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised, eyes, you know, hearing, seeing, uh, taste, touch, smell, exercise or trained to discern both good and evil. So we talked about how you have to go and feel and touch and see and taste and smell. And God uses these things to help develop us to the point where we can understand, we can discern, we can distinguish between what's good and what's evil. Amen? Amen. Now I want to show you something on that real quick because we finished that off last week, but I want to bring one more thing up to you. Go to Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 30. You get there, say amen. amen. All right, I'm going to go to verse 15. Verse 15 says, this is, this is God talking through Moses. He says, see, see, in that a sense, right? See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. So life and good go together. Death and evil go together. So life is good. And everything that tends to life is good. Death is evil. And everything that tends to death is evil. So there's a difference between life and death and good and evil. And he says, notice here, I have said it before you. In other words, like choices. Y'all with me here? Like options. Some of you said NIV. All right, let's read the NIV on that, please. So get the NIV. For me on uh, Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. All right? It says, see, I set before you today life and... Oh, man. Oh, see, I didn't see that. Thank you, partner. I've set before you today life and prosperity. So prosperity must be good. Well, Lucy got some explaining to do. Because all these pre preachers and people and, 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 and internet preachers and YouTube preachers and blog preachers trying to convince the whole body of Christ in the world that prosperity isn't good. But the word says. That word good probably in the Hebrew is the word tob, T-O-W-E. I didn't look it up. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't bother. I mean, I, I thought we figured good is good. But now I know good is prosperity. It's probably the word top, T-O-W-B. Glory to God. I'm just going to guess at that. And, and the word, uh, then we go death and destruction. And that destruction we saw was evil. And there, I, probably the Hebrew word ra, R-A-H, something like that. Uh, R-A, R-A-H, I'm, I'm guessing. Help me out. Nobody there yet? Good is top. T O W B? Rich, valuable in estimation. Prosperous. All right? It's top. All right, good. Good. Y'all didn't know I knew Hebrew, did you? So that's good here. So he set before us today. Today. Woo! Right now you have a choice. Right now you have a choice. Right this moment today you have a choice. I choose life. I choose prosperity. Today. Send prosperity now. Today. Today. My God. Death and destruction. Death and evil. So there's nothing good about death or anything that comes from death, anything resembles death, anything that tends to death that is evil. So obviously there's a difference, Sister Garrett, between good and evil, between prosperity and destruction. The Bible says poverty is the destruction of the poor. So there's nothing good about poverty. There ain't no reason to be poor and proud. As a Christian, if we poor, we ought to be ashamed. Not that God's shaming us, but we ought to say, God, I'm missing something because this does not properly reflect who you made me. I'm a son of God. And no son of a king 
should live like a pauper. So today, I choose prosperity. Say it again. Today, right now, I choose for me and my house prosperity. Because it's good. Because God said so. All right. All right. Now, okay. That's good. Let's go, go to verse 19. Verse 19. Verse 19. Verse 19. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today. Now he's calling in the witnesses for us. <laughs> against you. Witnesses against you. Or witnesses up. Uh, don't think of against like they're, they're opposing you. Is witnesses against you. In other words, I stand against Deke. Or you lean against the wall. So I call uh, heaven and earth as witnesses against you or before you. Yes. So in other words, once I put these witnesses out, yes, you can't go and say, I didn't give you a choice. You don't, you don't, 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 don't get to heaven and tell me I didn't let you choose that, that God, well, you chose this lot in life for me. No, I didn't choose that lot in life for you. Well, you got to just deal with the hand that you've been playing. No, 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 no. God said, today I've set before you life and prosperity. So he said, I call, now I call heaven and earth today as witnesses. So you got, you got witnesses now, so you don't lie to God. That I have set before you life and death. So these are now opposites. Blessing and cursing. Now, in case you're not bright enough, in case you're not smart enough, in case sanity's try, insanity is trying to creep in, he said, choose. He did. He wanted. Listen, I'm, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to. You, you ever been to a restaurant? And you, and you know, you got things, you're trying to figure out what to order, what to order, and you say, I'm trying to decide between, between this and this, and you ask the server, you know, what do you think about this? And they go, you know, if I were you. I, that's never happened to y'all? Uh, you know, I take their advice. They know. So when God says, I set before you, and I got heaven and earth to witness this now. I set before you life and death, two choices, blessing and cursing, two choices. He's saying, hey, therefore, I I'm just, I'm just want to urge you, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. I got to keep going. That you may love the Lord your God. That you may obey his voice. Yes. That you may cling to him. Yes. Now he said choose life so that you can do all this stuff. Right. 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 What? Yeah. Yeah. He's, you, you can't love the Lord without choosing life. Right. Right. You can't obey his voice without choosing life. Because, right. yeah, thank you Holy Spirit, I heard that. Because if you choose death, he don't lead you. No. You're not going to hear his voice. You choose death. You choose cursing. You choose evil. I, I can't lead you in evil. He leads me beside the still waters. He leads me into green pastures. He restores my soul. He, he don't lead me into no rough, dry, barren, desolation. So I don't even get his voice till I choose the right way. And that you may cling to him. The only way you can cling to him is if you choose life. For he is your life and the length of, of your days. Say, he's my life and the length of my days. Say, life is not short. Life is long. People go around all these t-shirts and mugs. Life is short. Pray hard. Life is short. Play hard. Life is short. Do whatever. Life ain't short. Length of days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord your Lord swore to your fathers to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. Now, so we're talking about we got a choice here, D. 
between good and evil. I got a choice between good and evil. God said, I set good and evil before you. But Hebrews 5.14 said, my senses have to be trained to discern. So if my senses aren't trained to discern, I might keep choosing death. I might keep choosing evil thinking it's good. Oh, pastor, it's too obvious. I can't choose evil. Explain to me then all these church folk. Sick and think it's God's will. I'm just going to go through for Jesus. Oh, you just chose death. All, all I got is a little butter beans and a little piece of cornbread. But that's all I need in my lot in life. And you know, I'm just, just going to believe God to pay my light bill every month. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to struggle and strain. You, oh, you chose that, huh? See, but the, 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 the scripture, there's a scripture, Isaiah 520. Isaiah 520 says, what are those who call evil good and good evil? What are those who call evil good and good evil? And much of the church is calling good evil and evil good. That same verse, Isaiah 520 from the expanded Bible, the expanded Bible says this, how terrible it will be for people who call good things bad and bad things good. So there are people because they don't discern evil and good, they call bad things good and good things bad. That's too much house. That's too much car. What you need with all that car? Don't, don't nobody need all that car. Don't nobody need all them cars. See, that they're calling good bad. We want God to manifest. We want good to manifest. We want good to manifest. I want whatever God calls good to manifest. Is that right? I want whatever God calls good to manifest. God knew good from evil, didn't he? When he created the whole heavens and the earth, he looked at something and said, that's good. He saw that it was good. If it wasn't good, he didn't call it good. Right? Man was alone. That's not good. Now, Adam didn't even have a sense to know that. Y'all missed that. Adam didn't even know that it wasn't good. As far as he knew, that's all there was. As far as a lot of church folk know, that's all there is. Just paycheck to paycheck, just trying to, you know, just trying to move along. You know, sickness and disease is part of life. You know, every little life, a little rain must fall. You know, up and down, double, double to the ground. And, you know, little drama is, is good to keep your, your juices flowing. Drama in your marriage, drama with your kids. You know, that's just part of life. But that's not part of life. Not the God kind of life. Not the God kind of life. God said that is not good. So when God saw something that was not good, he did something about it. <laughs> Let me put you to sleep, Adam. And pull something good out of you. <laughs> Let me get past your flesh, Adam. Let me get past your mental faculty, Adam. Because you probably wouldn't understand what I was doing. So let me just get something, get past that. Pull something out of you and then present it to you. See, you don't understand how your prosperity is happening. Your prosperity is happening because God is going to pull good things out of the good treasures of your heart and then present them to you. Y'all don't even get half excited about that, boy. That's good right there. He's going to pull good things out of you and then present it to you. You don't hear what I'm saying. That dream house is already on the inside of you. Your, 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 your dream car is on the inside of you. Your, your multifaceted conglomerate business is already on the inside of you. 
that global ministry is already on the inside of you. That child you want is already on the inside of you. Everything you desire, it's already on the inside of you. What God's going to do is just reach in there, pull it out, and then present it to you. Right? Then the Bible says he's already giving you all things that pertain to life. He's already giving it to you. It's inside you already. If you already have revelation. But if you don't have revelation, if you've not been meditating the word of God and not gotten a revelation of what God's put on the inside of you, he can't pull anything out of you. Lord, where where my help? I, I, I got to get it out inside of you, but you got to put something in, inside of you. I, 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 made, I made you the incubator for it. When you put seed of the word of God inside you, you are the incubator. And all by itself, the earth produces. Are y'all following this here, boy? That's good. That's good. All by itself, the earth. You're the earth. Come on now. Come on. Man, God took the dust of the earth and made man. You're the earth. You are the earth. You're walking around earth people. You're earth suits. This is an earth suit. You're made of earth. When you die, your this body returns back to earth. So the same way I can take a seed and put a seed in dirt outside, or I can take seed and put it, I can wrap seed actually in paper. I can wrap seed in paper. And if I wet it and put it in the right conditions, it'll grow it. So if you get the seed of the word on healing, the seed of the word on prosperity, the seed of the word on any area of your life, if you get it into your heart and, and maintain it properly, all by itself, your earth will make that seed grow. And then what's on the inside of you will all of a sudden appear on the outside of you. That's why God corrected me a couple weeks ago when I was, I was saying things like, I never thought I'd be out there in Seattle preaching to Marshall's people. And God the next day said, you had to have thought it. Right. That's right. It's the only way I can show it to you. Right. It's the only way I can get it to you. You had to have, to have thinking it, be right. thinking this already. Right. And then he began to show, remind me of dreams and visions he showed me years ago, me preaching all over the place. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I just kind of had discounted it. Just, that's just a dream. Mm-hmm. And he said, that's not your dream, that was my dream. Yes. You know, I told y'all about the dreams I had uh, Thursday night and Friday night yes. Yes. about me catching all the fish. Yes. The first night I was catching the fish in a river. My street was a river yes. and I was throwing nets out, mm-hmm. throwing a net and I was catching all these mullet. I, I, I call it mullet. I, you know, I, I don't know. All I know is they were all the same fish. The first thing that came to my mind was mullet. And I was just catching this fish all day, just catching them. Schools and schools and schools of mullet or whatever the fish was, just the same fish. And the next night, the dream I had, I'm just going for people who weren't here Sunday, that I was standing in, in, at my house, but my house was literally on the water. I don't mean like waterfront. It was literally on the water. And this time, I wasn't catching a fish. I was just walking all through them. But it was all kinds of fish. And when I got home Sunday night, I got the scripture. Y'all want to see it? You know it. It's Ezekiel 47. I know I'm way off track here, but this is on track. Ezekiel 47. And it's verse 7. I'm going to show you what this division of the Lord showed me two nights in a row. Verse 7, y'all there? When I returned there along the bank of the river, were many trees on one side and the other. Then he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region, goes down into the valley and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the rivers go will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters go there for they will be healed And everything will live wherever the river goes. It shall be that fishermen Uh will stand by it from in Gedi to in Eglom. They will be places for spreading their nets. Their fish will be of the same kinds as the fish 
of the great sea exceedingly many. Now, now, if you look at New King, New King James like we read, it doesn't say it as well. But if you look, let's say, give me the NIV, just for example. NIV on that. Uh, verse, verse 9. Verse 9. There will be large numbers of fish. You see that? Yeah. Swarms of living creatures will be wherever the living river flows. There will be large numbers of fish. All right, then go to verse 10 for me. Verse 10. Spreading their nets. Now look at the end of verse 10. The fish will be of many kinds. Yeah. That's different than the last verse. Yeah, right. 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 See, the first one was just many fish. Right. The next one was many fish right. of many kinds. Yeah. Now, some of y'all remember this back last year, around November, December, we had that B service. Yeah. And the Lord gave that to me. Those four rivers. Those fish represent prosperity. See, and I realize now what's happening. That I have been transformed by the renewing of my mind. See, I've gone through, and you know, and you always do this because it's progressive, the revelation stage. But I'm in the transformation stage. See, in the transformation stage, now you, you, you think rich. You think prosperous. You see prosperity. It's just, and once you're, you're there, it's just a matter of time before. On another level. Yeah. See where, where I am, where my wife and I now are now is already a manifestation of what we were transformed into previously. But now we're at a higher level of revelation and a higher level of transformation. So now we're going to enter into a higher level of manifestation. Come on now, he began to prosper. Now, let me go back because I want to get, get back on track. We may not finish tonight, but we'll get as far as we can. So we said, God said, I set before you life, death, blessing, and curse. He said, I set before you life and good or life and prosperity. Uh, then I talked about evil or death and destruction. Right? So there's a difference between good and bad. Good things, bad things. Good things, evil things. You and I have to discern between good things and evil things. So we said what we want. We, I expect good things in my life, Deacon Tyrone. Yes, I expect. I'm just, that's just where I am now. I've been transformed to the point where now all I expect, I don't expect bad things. If a bad thing happened, I say, whoa. What? what, what, what? You know, there are some people, most people start out when they're in the world, uh, they just expect bad things. They just, I'm just, oh, I'm, I, I, well, if it wasn't for bad luck, I would have no luck at all. You ever heard somebody say that? Because they just expect bad things to happen. Or they, they become so used to bad things, it doesn't move them. Right. Well, I'm now to the point, I'm so used to good things that if a bad thing shows up, what the what? Something wrong. Checking my wife. Have you seen? No. I'm just I gotta find, you know, because I expect good things in my life. Now, we said now, you and I want to discern between good things and bad things, right? So I want to go back to something uh, dad showed us a couple years ago. Uh, what God calls good and what God calls evil. So let's go to Luke 19, Luke 16, rather. Luke 16, because I want to expect and receive good things. And if I find that Jesus calls something good, then it's good. I don't care what the preacher say, Sunday school teacher says. I don't care what your mama and them say. I don't care what you say. If Jesus calls this good, then it's good. And if he calls it evil, then it's evil. Right? Luke 16, I'm going to read a few verses here, verse 19 through 25. Ready? There was a certain rich man who was, who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who, lay, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by angels into the Abraham's bosom. Aha. Uh-huh. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his, bo- in his bosom. Then he cried 
and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, things, but now he is and you are. Now who's telling this parable? Jesus. Jesus. It's in red, right? He's telling this parable here. So we're going to see the mind of God as there was a good thing and what are evil things. Right? Yes, All right, so let's identify evil things. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's give it give, give the bad side first. All right. Well, evil things, remember Jesus said here in verse 25, he said, uh, son, Abraham said, son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and Lazarus, evil things. So whatever Lazarus, what, what was tied to Lazarus, we can call that evil, evil. things. So let's go back here. Lazarus, let's look at verse 20. Verse 20. First of all, he was a beggar. Help me out. Help me out now. Evil thing. Jesus himself called this. The mind of God calls this an evil thing. So to be, for you and I to be a beggar, begging the government, begging the bank, begging mom and daddy, begging anybody for anything, That's an evil thing. All right. Then it says he was full of sores. What? Evil Evil things. They call it evil thing. It's full of sores. So we just imply sickness. So sickness then is an evil thing. Disease is an evil thing. Skin rashes, breakouts, whatever, is an evil thing in the eyes of Jesus. So there's no way Jesus or God would put sickness on you if it's an evil thing. Right? So that's evil. An evil thing. Then it said, who was laid at his gate? He was laid, so that means he must have been crippled. If he's laid there, he couldn't walk, he couldn't carry himself. So he's impotent, he's lame, he's crippled, maybe paralyzed. We don't know what it is, but he can't move around on his own. So this is overall an indigent man. He's a, he's a, uh, if he's laid at his gate, he's probably homeless. Evil thing. And notice what the Bible says here. He desiring to be fed with crumbs. So he's a crumb snatcher. (laughs) Or let, let's, I don't want to call him a crumb snatcher. Maybe that's, that's being harsh. But he had low desire. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. He had low desire. Does the Bible say desiring? Does the Bible say desiring? Desiring to be fed with crumbs. That's an evil thing. To have your desire level so low. If I can just get crumbs, I'll be all right. If I can just get me whatever, you know. If I can just just get, you know, the bargain basement, whatever they got left over, whatever, just just, just whatever. Now, I'm I'm not trying to pick on where you shop or what you do. I just want you to understand that get your desire up. Don't ever desire just just the menial, just enough, just the barely, just the what. Don't don't desire that. That's not for you. See, if if you understand Galatians chapter four, I don't have time to go there, but Galatians four talks about that you are the heir of the whole estate. So you're not supposed to be the man at the gate begging. You're supposed to be the gate, the guy behind the gate with the table. Fair and sumptuously. Yes, so, tell your neighbor, get your desire up. No more crumbs. Come on, come on, tell somebody else around you, no more crumbs, no more crumbs. I better not come to Sunday and see no crumbs around your mouth. I better not, no crumbs all in your beard, Deke. I don't want to see no crumbs on you. No, 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 no crumbs. No crumbs, no crumbs. No, I want the whole loaf. I want, 
I want everything that's, that's mine. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed. Now he who ministers seed to the sower and bread for food. He don't minister crumbs. So stop asking God for crumbs. He doesn't minister crumbs. You, you just, you just, oh, God. Crumbs is an evil thing. He does not minister crumbs. He only ministers bread. To get crumbs you got to take Deke's leftovers. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Don't be mad at Deke because he has enough audacity, enough expectation, right. enough sonship realization to ask for bread. Jesus said to that woman of, of, uh, from, from, uh, from Sarah Phoenicia, he said, it is not me to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. She said, yeah, but the dogs yes, eat the crumbs from the masses. What? what? Y'all didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, she knew this. Dogs eat crumbs. Oh. Tell your neighbor, I ain't no dog. I ain't no dog. I ain't no dog. I ain't no, ain't no dog. Don't even call me. You want to mention my what's up, dog? Don't call me. No, I ain't no dog. I ain't no dog. I'm a son of the living God. I'm an ambassador from the kingdom of God. I'm a representative of the kingdom of heaven. Ain't no dog. So I don't live on crumbs. Crumbs is evil. Moreover, I've heard people preach this and say, yeah, but the dogs licked this sores. God was taking care of old Lazarus because the dogs. That was not a compliment. That was not a good thing. That was not the mercy and grace of God. It said, moreover. Moreover meant even worse. Oh. See, people preach this and get you to settle in on less, on lower. But long, long as God sent a dog every once in a while to lick my old sappy souls. I'll be all right. You ain't going to be all right. There, listen, there is no place in scripture that speaks of dogs in a good light. Right? The Bible says the dogs return to vomit. Paul said, beware of the dogs. Come on now, he said, you know, you watch them dogs. You gotta watch out for dogs. Tell your neighbor, watch them dogs. Ain't nothing good about no dogs. When when Jezebel, when Jezebel in her old silly self fighting against the prophet of God and God Himself, and she died. Blood splattered all over the ground. Her body just bust open. And the prophet already told her this was going to happen. And it happened just like he said. The dogs came, licked up her blood. Dogs came and licked up her blood. So for dogs to come and lick up Lazarus' sores, his bloody sores, Jesus said that's an evil thing. But the church is trying to get, convince us to equate ourselves with Lazarus and not the rich man. Why? Because Lazarus went to heaven or went to Abraham's bosom, representative of heaven, and the rich man 
went to hell. Now, why did the rich man go to hell? Oh, because he was rich. Nope. He was he would he went to hell because he wasn't righteous. Let me let me show you. Can I show y'all something? Psalm 112. Y'all know Psalm 112? See, because there's there's a way the righteous, the righteous rich act. There's a way the rich righteous act. Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord and delights great in his commandments. That's me. Come on, somebody shout, that's me. That's me, that's me, that's me. That's me. Now look at verse 3. Wealth and riches will be in his house. My God. Shout, wealth and riches are in my house. Wealth and riches are in my house. And his righteousness endures forever. So, so obviously God didn't have a problem with the man being rich. Not if he's going to put wealth and riches in his house. But what he was missing was his second half here. Righteousness. How do we know? Look at verse 4. Unto the upright or the righteous there arises light and darkness. Here's the righteous. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. So this man, Lazarus, was at his gate begging. He saw him every day. Every time he pulled out, pulled out in, his, in his stretch camel, he saw, this, he saw the man out there. Six passenger camel. He had a double hump. He didn't drive no sports car camel. He drove a sedan. Double hump camel. A good, look at this verse 5. A good man deals graciously and lends. Look at verse 9. The righteous man. He has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His home will be exalted with honor. So the problem with this man was not that he was rich. He was unrighteous. That's why in hell, he lifted up his eyes. That's, that's for us to understand that God doesn't have a problem with you and I becoming rich. But make sure when you become rich, you maintain your righteous cause. You maintain, you, you, you are rich toward God. And as Paul talked about in 1 Timothy 6, 17 and 18, he talked about uh, command those who are rich. Not give everything away, but always be ready to give. Always ready to give. It's always ready. You don't become some hoarder. You don't become some selfish, greedy, miser, stingy person. You see somebody in need. I was telling Kirk, we were riding the other day. Uh, we were on our way to the bank to pay that mortgage off. And I told him the other day, I was riding down the street, and, uh, and uh, I saw the city bus pull up to the, to the, to the stop sign, to the bus stop, rather. And I saw this girl and her little baby. I, I think she had a girl and a, a little child in a stroller and one child with her. And they were trying to run to catch the bus. And so I don't think the bus driver saw her. I hope he didn't because he pulled off. And, and my thing was I was going to take my little car and go and get in front of the bus driver and make, try to make the bus stop. Because I wanted, hey, stop. You don't see that girl running? And then I thought, man, you know, I can't give her a ride because, you know. <laughs> you understand? You know, that. I have that call and explain to my, to my wife and make sure she lets everybody know pastor's riding with a woman in the car, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I'd make her get in the back seat and lay down or something. I, 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 I don't know how to do it. But what, that would have been awful. But what came to me was this. I said, I said, no, I, I said this to God. I said, God, that's why I need to have plenty of money. Because if I, I told Kirk, told Kirk I got plenty of money, I'm going to call my wife and say, baby, let's go pick this girl up here. Let's take her out to the Honda dealership, Toyota dealership somewhere. Let's go buy her a car. Pay it off. Buy that, I mean, buy that car cash. Pay the insurance up for a whole year. Now, here, girl, go on, go on, go to work. Go on, you know. See, but you got to already have your heart like that. You don't even pretend like, well, when I get rich, I'll, I then I want to do it. No, no, no. If you don't want to do it now, and if you don't practice it now on your level, it ain't going to happen when you got plenty of money. That's why God taught us that whole thing. See, this progressive revelation. That's why he taught us all about casting your bread. Cast your bread out of what you already have. Cast that. Glory to God. 
Somebody say, I don't want evil things. I want, evil things. I want good things. I want good all right, now look back at, 19, at 1625. Well, we almost out of time already. 1625. But Abraham said, son, remember, he's talking to the rich man here. Right? He's talking to the rich man. Yes, son. Mm -hmm. Wow, I didn't see that son. He in hell, he still called him son. Hey, so this man was a son of Abraham. You understand? Y'all understand that? Like you and I are the seed of Abraham. That's why he was rich. Because the blessing was on him. He was, he was in a blessed line. Now Lazarus was also a son. These are these are Jews in these stories. So Lazarus should have should have been as rich as this rich man. But Lazarus didn't discern good and evil. Lazarus had life and death set before him, good and evil set before him. He chose evil. All right, so let's go back to this here. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that. So remember that in your lifetime, you received your good things. Now, see, the church will preach this here, that if you receive your good things in your lifetime, you won't receive any good things afterward. But that doesn't match Mark 1030, does it? Y'all know Mark 10.30? Mark 10.30, where, where Jesus said, there's no one who's left house, mother, father, land, children, whatever, for my sake in the gospel, who won't receive a hundredfold children, lands, uh, mothers, houses, brethren, for, uh, you know, um, in this lifetime. And in the life to come, eternal life. So Jesus, Jesus was saying, he wasn't saying, if you get all your good stuff hundredfold here, it's going to be hell when you, when you die. No, he said, you're going to get it, you have it going on over here and going on over there. So let's start all that church stuff. And let's go with the word stuff here. Jesus said this, all right? So he told a man, a rich man, you receive your good things. Let's go back and check out his good things. Y'all with this here? Faye, you getting this over here? I, I know, I can tell both of y'all, y'all getting this here. <laughs> verse 19. Verse 19. So let's call out the good things here. He said he was clothed in purple and fine linen. So let's call that fine apparel. Fine. Hallelujah. So nice clothes. Yes, sir. Exquisite clothes. Yes, sir. Even expensive clothes yes. is a good thing. Now, I ain't got to say the rest, but you can, you, can, you can deduce that if nice clothes and expensive clothes are good, then cheap, tattered up, won't last you a whole three days clothes is evil. Then it says here, so he's dressing nice. Everybody say, I want to dress nice. That's a good thing. Then he said here, and fared sumptuously every day. Every day. Huh. Now, people have taught when you says fared sumptuously, it means he ate well. But let's explore it a little more. Give the NIV on this for me, please. NIV. 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 Oh, did y'all read it already? Yeah. Stop going ahead of me. Verse 19. <laughs> there was a rich man. This, this Bible call is good. Okay, let, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. First of all, rich. rich. We skip all over rich. Rich is a good thing. Poor is a bad thing. Anybody, anybody here ever been poor? You know there ain't nothing good about that. Now you ain't rich like God's, like God's making you yet. But you know that if you got a little bit, that's better than nothing. You're beginning to prosper, that's better than where you were. <laughs> so it's a rich man, that's a good thing. Then he says dressed in purple and fine linen, that's a good thing. And notice what the, how the end of he puts it. Live, it didn't say ain't well. I'm, that's how I was taught too. 
He ate well. Well, we assume he ate well. He wasn't eating no beanies and weenies. Unless he wanted to. Unless they put some, some, some crispy bacon in that beanies and weenies. Put a little, little ground beef in them beanies and weenies. A little brown sugar, a little molasses. Little something. They put something in there, you know, you didn't make it right. Just open up no can of van de cans and dump it on my plate. I don't want that mess. Boil me a hot dog. No, 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 man. Put a what? No, I want to fast sumptuously. Grill that hot dog and slice it up. Julianne style. It's like, all right. Y'all know Julianne cut that. Make my hot dog look good at least, man. He lived in luxury every day. Okay, I, I got a translation. We don't have this, but I, I sent it to the media, so hopefully they got it. The worldwide English. Read it. There was a rich man who dressed and lived like a king every day. That's a good thing. To dress and live like a king every day. Is this the Bible? Oh, you twisting that. I didn't twist it. Jesus said that's good things. Every day. Not just tax season. Not just, not just payday and the day of the payday. No, no, no. Every day. Some of y'all saying, well, that ain't like, I ain't like that yet, Pastor. Proverbs 4.18 Y'all know Proverbs 4.18. Y'all read Proverbs 4.18 today, right? Get on the screen. They didn't read it, Lord. Proverbs 14. But the path of the just is like that shines So you may not, may not be living like a king every day now. Oh, but it's, it, it's, it's getting better. It's a start. You're going to begin to prosper now. We're talking about progressive manifestation here. So it's going to get brighter and brighter. Ever brighter, ever brighter, ever brighter, ever brighter. Oh, it's so dark. Don't worry about it. Just stay with it. It's going to get brighter, Nissa. Every day. So, so okay, go back to Luke 16, 19. Let's finish out here. My clock is already out, so. So there's a certain rich man who lived like a king every day. He was clothed in purple and fine, and that's good. Fair, sumptuously every day. That's a good thing. Then it says, verse 20, there's a certain beggar named Lazarus full of sores who's laid at his gate. So he had a gated home. No, no, uh, gated estate. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Laid at his gate. Not the gate. Not the gate of the community. His gate. I thank God. God's moving us into gated, you know, gated community. That's, that's a step. You're, you're in the right direction. But it ain't going to be ain't gonna be done till you, till you got your own gate. And according to Jesus, that's a good thing. See, I'm just trying to help you discern good and evil. Good and evil. I'm trying to help you to get some impeccable taste. Yeah, we get in the mind of God. Sister Carol, we get in the mind of God. This is what Jesus said. He's, Jesus, he didn't speak anything that the Father didn't speak. He didn't say anything contrary to what the Father th thought himself. So get it a state. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Then, then, he, then, he, then let's get down here because they die. They both die, right? And then rich man was buried. He could afford a funeral. He, he had his whole death 
everything covered. And I ain't talking about with no insurance. Because rich people don't buy insurance. Rich people self-insure. Rich people don't pay somebody else to pay their bills. Oh! Rich people don't buy life insurance. They got enough money set aside. Now, hey, if you're not there yet, and you don't, you know, I'm not condemning you for, for, you know, having life insurance because if you got bills, you, know, you don't leave those bills to nobody else, you don't have a life insurance. But as you, as you increase, see, that, that's, that's why uh, there's an insurance, I think it's called term life. Term life insurance, y'all ever heard of term life insurance? It's opposite of whole or universal. Term life insurance, uh, it's much cheaper, but it expires at a certain date. Because the, the purpose of term life insurance, they assume that as your wealth grows, the less you need insurance. Right. So they don't, they don't cover you to the day till you 105. They're going to cover you for 20 years. They, they assume by 20 years, this is your plan. In 20 years, you can cover yourself. Because you've already put your own money aside. you got enough wealth laid up that your family doesn't have to try to figure out how to do anything. And, and, and the plan, my plan is to be like Abraham. You check out Abraham, before Abraham died, Abraham gave everything away. He called his kids in, all right, look, I'm, I'm about to leave. I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to leave the planet. Uh, so, hey, you guys, here, y'all take all this, and y'all go and get. <laughs> and then he said to Isaac, all right, you got everything else. And then he died. You check it out. Genesis 25. That's, that's all right. All right, now. So we just, we just finished up good things here. Okay? So go back to verse 25. 25. But Abraham said, son. That, that ought to stick with you there. So remember that in your lifetime, you received your good things. And likewise, Lazarus' evil things. Now, we've got two more things to talk about here. But now... He is comforted, and you are tormented. So comfort must be good. Because he said, but now. In other words, he's given the flip side. His whole life, Lazarus had evil things, but now he's comforted. So, so comfort is good. <laughs> and torment is evil. So tell you that, but God wants you comfortable. Y'all ain't saying that to you. You can't be sweating all in your house in the summertime. And I got news for you. Uh, the winter's already broke. The winter's, winter's broke. Winter is broke. Winter is broke. Time changed this Sunday. Spring's already in the air. So it's, go, it's time to go and click that thing. Let that thing go and click on. Lord have mercy. All right, go back to verse 19. Verse 19. Because, you know, we didn't just say all this to be entertaining. We said all this to get you to understand there's a difference between good things and evil things. And I'm going to go by what God, through Jesus Christ, called good. And what God, through Jesus Christ, called evil. So that I don't let you... You know, when I say you, I'm talking about people. Tell me what's good and tell me what's evil. I got to know for myself by what Jesus said. Because people, I'm telling you, as you move into your next house, people are going to talk about you. I, I, you know, that's the truth. Where you are now, they talk about you. I don't care if you're in an apartment. A condo, a townhouse, I don't care where you are right now. It's somebody who, who knows you and they, they, they already think that you think you something. That's right. What you think? No. 
They're already questioning, why would you go and get that? You don't need no two-bedroom. <laughs> you don't need no four-bedroom. Why are you, they, already, they already questioning that now. God prosper you, they already bother with you. So, trust me, when you get your, your, your biggin, they don't, they don't talk about you. Remember, remember Mark, 30, Mark 10, verse 30? Remember I gave you Mark 10, verse 30? He said, you'll receive all these things with persecution. Isn't that what happened to, to Isaac we read in Genesis 26? Uh, verse uh, 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 14. The Philistines envied him. Yes. You keep reading down there, they persecute him bad. Yes. Man, they mess with Isaac so bad. Because they couldn't handle his prosperity. They, they, oh, man. So when people persecute you, guess what the root of it is? Envy. They're not really mad about your house. They're mad about their house. They're not mad about your car. They're really mad about their car. So Zan, ain't, ain't, ain't everybody happy about your new car? Y'all driving nice little cars over there. Ain't everybody happy about that? Oh, they ain't even working. How they got... They, 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 what? <laughs> All right, verse 19. Let's finish up. Verse 19. Now, remember we saw here in the, in the worldwide English, there was a rich man who dressed and, and lived like a king every day. All right? Uh, New King James says, there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously Every day. Now remember, you, I saw you indicate this, and I, I had the same thing. We were taught that he ate well. Now if you say he ate well, that's a very limited thing in, in his life. I mean, we, we, we assume he ate well, but that's very limited. It was more than that. He lived luxuriously. He lived like a king. But when I begin to look at that, because I tried, I tried to, because when I was studying this, I said, I know it means better than eating. And I've been taught eating, but I knew it was more, more than eating. But as I studied, I, I discovered more than I was looking for. So in, in the last couple of minutes, let, let's, let, me, let me try to show you a little bit here. It said he was clothed in, fine, clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. So that word fared, F-A-R-E-D is the Greek word euphrino, spelled E-U-P-H-R-A-I-N-O, euphrino. It's pronounced euphrino. It means to gladden, to make joyful, to be glad, to be merry, to rejoice, to rejoice in, to be delighted with a thing. So somebody do me a favor. Get, get that uh, Luke 16, 19. I don't have, you know, a, a little do that in front of me. Y'all got all these tablets and all this stuff. That 16, 19, can you pull some other translations for me? Pull some other translations. Somebody give me like a uh, New Living or the Living Bible. You got New Living? Stand up real loud and read that. Read that. Read, make, make sure you get on the microphone here. Come on up here. 19, right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jesus said there was a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed and who lived each day in luxury. Lived each day in luxury. Good, good. Somebody else got another translation. Living Bible. Come on, come on, real quick. Come on, come on now. Come on, come on up here. Hurry up. Got to get on the microphone. <laughs> it says there was a certain rich man, Jesus said, who was splendidly clothed and lived each day in mirth and luxury. In mirth. mirth. That's, a, that's, that's, that's a good word because we're getting closer to the one I'm looking for. Somebody else, give me, come on, y'all got, come on, come on, come on. What do you have? Come, come this way. That's the Bible in basic English. Get into the light, get into the light. All right. <laughs> now there was a certain man of great wealth who was dressed in fair clothing of purple and delicate linen and was shining and glad every day. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get you to see what fair sumptuously. It wasn't just about he's eating steak. Somebody else got something? Come on, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. This ain't about steak and swimp, right? Come on, come on, get in the microphone now. Oh, I have the easy to read. Easy to read. That should be easy to read. <laughs> Jesus said there was a rich man who always dressed in the finest clothes. He was so rich that he was able to enjoy all the best things every day. Oh! That's a good thing! Now, there, there's one, I don't know what it was, but it talked about he had, he had feasts and festivals every day. You have Amplified? Come on up here. Hurry up. Hurry up, Sister Annie. You got it. You got it. You've been holding back on me. You sitting there with the Amplified. She ain't need all that doodad. She got Amplified right there. Turn around so the world can see you. Go ahead. Verse 19, chapter 16. Okay, there was a certain rich man who habitually clothed himself in purple and fine linen and revered and feasted and had a very merry... Oh, go back. And did what now? Feast feasted and... And made very merry and splendor every day. Made very merry. This is what I'm trying to get you to hear. Every day was a party. Every day. Jesus said, that's a good thing. One more, you got one? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on up here. Real quick, real quick, real quick. This is kind of what I just said. Okay, here we go. Good word translation. Good word or God's word? I think it's God's word. God's word. Yeah, GW, God's word. Here we go, last one. There was a rich man who wore expensive clothes every day and was, was like a party to him. And every day was like a party to him. My God! Wait, 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 wait! Holy Ghost, I caught it! Now we know why Abraham called him son. Go back to chapter 15. Chapter 15. There's a prodigal son. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Prodigal son leaves home, yes, takes his inheritance, goes out, spends it, ends up in the pig, pig stock, comes back and says, I just want to be a servant. The father said, you can't be a servant. You're my son. Let's throw him a party. Son. The older son came and said, but dad, I've been here. I've served you. You never gave me a party. He said, son, you're always with me. You can throw a party every day. So the expectation of God is sons party all the time. Children of God, we live like a feast. We live in Mary. Ain't just Merry Christmas. It's Merry Tuesday and Merry Wednesday and Merry Thursday and Merry Friday and Merry Saturday and Merry Sunday. Ain't no waiting Monday. It's Merry Monday. Hey girl, what you gonna do tomorrow? Party! I'm gonna rejoice and be exceedingly glad! See, the only problem with the rich man was he didn't know how to invite other folk to the... Yeah, God, God, my God. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Jesus said... He said, listen, you, this is Jesus now, this ain't Paul. Jesus said to the rich man, he, to the rich people, he said, rich people, when you throw a feast, don't invite just your friends who can invite you to their feast. He said, but invite those others who they can invite you to their house because they don't have a house. He said, he didn't say rich people get rid of all your riches. He said, just make sure you invite those people who can't, who don't have anything else to offer you. 
they can't pay you back. That's why Jesus Christ didn't have a problem with the man being rich. It says the problem is the man was partying and never invited this poor Lazarus to the party. Make up in your mind when God brings you to a place where you party every day that you don't party by yourself. It ain't even fun to party by yourself. Bring somebody in who can't pay you back. Say, come on, let's go out to eat. Come on, let's go shopping. Come on, let's live like kings every day. Invite somebody to the party. Somebody who can't pay you back. Somebody who can't, they can't do nothing else for you. Jesus gave another parable. He said, I'm, I'm throwing a wedding feast. He said, invite, invite all my rich people to the, to the feast. And everybody kept making excuses. Well, I got things to do. I got things to do. He said, go into the hedges and highways. He said, no, no, no. He said, see, you understand. When I throw a party, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want my house to be full. Yes, sir. And if all these other folk got too much to do, go into the hedges and the highways. Yes, sir. Get the lame and the cripple and the blind and the man and the hawk and the deaf and the mute. Bring them in that my house may be full. Because when I party, I want a full house party. That's the mind of God. Okay, so let's go back. Can we go back? He fared sumptuously. I just got to show you this because I want you to understand. <laughs> oh, Shana, you listening to this? I can tell you listening to what I'm saying. That girl, she tuned into my face. <laughs> he fared sumptuously. But I want you to understand a mindset here, Thomas. That word fair is the, is the word euphrino, which means to gladden, to make joyful, to be glad, to be glad, be merry, rejoice, rejoice in the, in the delighted, rejoice in, be delighted with a thing. It comes from two words, you, E-U, and friend, P-H-R-E-N. Now, the, the first word, you, E-U, get that up there if y'all have that, please. We've seen this one before. It means to be well off, to fare well, prosper, acting well. Now, if you remember when we first started this whole thing, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, Beloved, I pray and wish above all that you would prosper and be in health. That word prosper was, was the Greek word euhodos. You, same, it's the same thing. And it meant to act well. It meant to start thinking right. The, the, the phrase hodos, do y'all, can y'all have, do y'all have that word hodos? You should still have, I didn't send it to you tonight, but you should still have that, the, uh, the H-O-D-O-S somewhere in there. Hodos, this is the other part of pro, oh, prosper, a way of travel, a way, a travel way, a road, metaphorically, watch what it says, a course of conduct, watch this, a manner of thinking, feeling, decided. That's what prosper is. Yes, sir. It's you hodos. Acting well, prospering, hodos. You think, feel, decide prosperity. Now go back to Luke 16 verse 9. I'm trying to show you something here about this rich man. Because the church has condemned the rich man. Because he went to hell. But not because he was rich. It's because he wasn't righteous. He said it's you, Frino, Made up of two, of two words, you and friend, right? The you I gave you, get, get EU back up there. EU, you, is to be well off, farewell, prosper. What else? Acting well. Now, friend, P-H-R-E-N, is the midriff or the diaphragm. It's the parts of the heart. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It is the mind. The faculty of perceiving and judging, or the faculty or the ability to discern. 
So the man discern good and evil every day. He had choices. He had he had options. He had and he knew how to. He knew no, that ain't right. This is right. No, I don't. No, I that, no, I won't find linen. He, he's a son. So when it says he fared sumptuously, it's he you freno sumptuously. He was well off. He acted well because his mind could perceive and judge what well was. The problem with Lazarus was Lazarus couldn't discern what was good and evil. That's why he kept settling for evil. But the rich man, he could discern what's good and evil. He said, I don't want that. The, his sense was shot. See, his, his, only, his, only, his only fault was he wasn't righteous in that he didn't share. Now, that's not you and, you and I, right? We, we share right, right, right where we are right now. So when I when I become that certain rich man in St. Petersburg, clothed in three piece suits and partying every day, I'm not gonna be one who sees somebody who they need and I don't. I just no, I look. But notice this: to get there, to get there. I have to begin to think well. I begin begin to act well. I got to begin to prosper in my, in my mind. I've got to get the parts of my heart, my mind, my faculty, my ability to perceive and judge has to come up to a level where I can discern between good and evil. And last thing, I gave you this word last week, sensibility. Sense of sensibility? It's the ability to appreciate beautiful things. It's to have good or discriminating taste. So this man had good and discriminating taste. And Jesus called that, good. Oh, not just good, a good thing. A good thing. Last thing, and then we'll pick this up next week. Everybody say, I want. I expect, I expect, I can discern, I, can discern, I, receive, I receive good things. Good things. Now watch this. Hebrews 9.11, I showed y'all this. 9.11 is your emergency scripture. Hebrews 9.11. But Christ came. Come on now. Gershom. But Christ came. As the high priest, yes. what kind of things? Good things. Good things to come. So good things, they are are coming. Good things are on the way, and I'm gonna know that they're good things when they arrive, because I've got my faculties right, got my senses trained, and I heard from Jesus. On how to know what's a good thing yeah. and what's an evil thing. Yeah. So now I know when something comes and it's evil, no, I reject that. That's not from Jesus. Crumbs, no, that's not from Jesus. Ain't no dogs gonna lick my sores, no. I don't, I don't need nobody to pat me on my back and tell me it's gonna be all right. That ain't, no, that, no, I don't need that. No, 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 no. no don't, you can't sing no song to a man of sorrow. So Jesus came as the high priest of the good things to come. Whew. Next week I'm going to show you, because we're going to get into some things about Isaac here. That's going to help us, I believe. In the next part of this series on progressive manifestation. Progressive manifestation. It's coming. It's on the way. Do you all see that tonight? Well, give God a big shout. Praise. But the Lord sent more than that right there. I'm telling y'all to give God a real big praise. Get on your feet or something. Just... Hallelujah.
Glory to God. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, you're taking us steadily, 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 steadily changing us, steadily, progressively revealing, progressively transforming, progressively manifesting in our lives. You're bringing us to that place now when we have the capacity to receive the good things that are to come. That we will stand with you and not disagree with you, not Stand behind you, Lord, but we'll stand with you. Understand what you want to do in us, for us, and through us. Thank you, Father, that, Lord, as you bring us to a place of, of uh, faring sumptuously, that we'll not be as the rich man in the sense that we don't share, we don't love, we don't bless, we don't bind someone else's wounds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Lord, we'll be ready to distribute. Yes. Willing to share. Ready to give. Yes. 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 We'll invite those and we'll bless those, Lord, who don't have any way of returning the favor. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because we're not trying to get anything back. We're just trying to follow as your word says, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Yes. <laughs> And God, so that means for us to do it, you'll bless us tremendously. And you're able to make all grace abound toward us. That we'll have all sufficiency in all things and abound to every good work. You make us rich in every way so that we can be generous on every occasion. That wherever the occasion demands generosity, we'll, we can do it. We'll be ready. In the grocery store, we'll be ready. At the restaurant, we'll be ready. Hallelujah. At, at the school uh, office where tuition is need, need to be paid, we'll be ready. We'll, whatever it is, Lord, somebody's about to lose their house, whatever, we'll be ready and able to help God because we don't want anybody to experience evil. We think no evil. We wish no evil, Lord, for anybody. Lord, you'll even get us and grow us in our love or even when our enemies are in trouble. We'll do good to them because your word says that'll heap coals of fire on their head. It'll, it'll bring them to a place of repentance when we do good to those even who hurt us or despitefully use us. But Lord, because your love is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, we're able to do that. Now I pray, Father, that you just let that manifestation begin in earnest in every life that there'll be some evidence like it was in Isaac's life and we're going to see that more next week because Isaac had possessions. We know that it's not about material, it's not about possessions, God. But Lord, possessions are an indication of how that blessing is operating and manifesting in our lives. But Father, we, we are sure, certain, and we promise that we'll have possessions, but they won't have us. You have our hearts, you have our spirits, you have our souls, you have our bodies. It belongs to you. We love you tonight. Now, Father, I pray tonight that your healing virtue would flow upon everybody in this room. Wherever there's sickness, wherever there's disease, wherever there's, there's some shortage in the body, in the physical realm, that God, by your glory, let your glory reign. Let your glory sit heavy. Let the weight of your glory be heavy upon every life tonight. Every organ we command to be healed and whole and healthy. Every, every organ, hallelujah, we command every sense to be sharp, eyes to be sharpened, ears to be sharpened, Lord, hallelujah, taste to be sharpened, God, touch to be sharpened, God, every part of us, God, to be sharpened, oh God, full faculty, full use of our, of our limbs. We curse sickness and disease. They are evil things. We curse death. It's an evil thing. Hallelujah. You set before us life and death, blessing and curse, and we choose life. We choose life. We curse diabetes. We curse hypertension. We curse HIV and AIDS. We, we curse right now, Lord, we curse lupus. We curse heart disease. Hallelujah. 
We curse right now, Lord, even every allergy, Lord, right now. Oh, we're not, not even going to be moved by the new season. Hallelujah. We curse every allergic condition right now. We command bodies to settle down in the name of Jesus. We will prosper and be in health. Even as our souls prosper. Everybody just lay hands on the person next to you right now. Just lay hands on the person next to you. Lay hands on the person next to you. You said, Lord, we shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. These signs follow them that believe. We're a room full of believers. In the name of Jesus. So right now we release healing virtue to flow. On every person, every body, down every aisle, every row in Jesus' name. Every organ, every tissue, every muscle, every blood cell, every blood vessel, every brain, mind, sharp and alert. We cancel every mental issue we curse right now. Every learning issue we curse right now. Every, every pain, every muscle, every growth, every bone spur, every fibroid, every tumor. Every growth, we command it right now to dissolve in Jesus' name. We command muscles, we command uh, every, every, every joint to be lubricated and loosened right now. In the name of Jesus, knees, elbows, shoulders, ankles, fingers, knuckles, every part of our bodies. Whole now. In the name of Jesus. Healing is the children's bread. God, we're not going to take crumbs anymore. Just a little bit better. No, 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 no. We don't desire crumbs. We take the bread that belongs to us. We receive our healing now. Divine healing manifested now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, just we just thank you that your prosperity will be upon us. That will operate in the fullness of the blessing. We thank you and we lean on the Holy Spirit, our tour guide. Holy Spirit, we ask you to show us in dreams, show us in visions, show us as we open your word. Lead us and guide us. You said in your word, Father, you will lead us and guide us in the way that we, should, we would go. We should go and you would guide us with your eye. Guide us by your spirit into what you have for us. Show us with the things you have prepared for us that we may walk into it. We love you. We appreciate you, Lord. We thank you that, God, you bring us back this weekend ready to serve you and praise you and glorify you and ready with more testimonies of your goodness this week. And Lord, we'll, we'll come dragging somebody in this church, God. Some unbeliever, someone, Lord, who doesn't know you, someone who, who's unsaved, someone who just hadn't been to church, God, we'll drag them in here, Lord. Bring them in here ready to hear your voice and they will be saved. He'll deliver and set free. And we give you praise for it now. In Jesus' mighty name, be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you as, as you go. Enjoy your weekend. Ladies, don't forget.